Ken, first of all, congratulations. This has been uh, many months in the making. I know a lot of fans have been waiting for it. Uh, Warner was the last person, uh, the last company to, to get that you got a deal with. What did it take to seal the deal with Warner Music? Well, we don't talk about uh, the negotiations we have with individual companies. Uh, suffice to say that we're thrilled that we're, uh, we're launching in the busy biggest music market in the world and that we're doing so with the, uh, with the support of all four major labels and a raft of independent labels. So uh, lots of demand out there, especially for the free service, which is invite only. Any plans to open that up? Yeah, I think uh, certainly at some point we will. Uh, like a lot of services, we want to sort of test the waters, put this in the hands of people who love music, let them play with it, uh, stress test our own uh, platform to see how that reacts. We've never launched in a market this uh, big before. So at some point we'll take the wraps off, but uh, for now, at least for the next several weeks, it'll be an invite-only system. However, if you do uh, want to get into the, uh, into the service, you can buy your way in uh, starting today. We have two levels of paid service. Now, you had little competition in Europe. It's very different here in the United States. There's Pandora, there's other mu music startups like Groove Shark, Turntable FM, the big guys, Apple, Google, and Amazon. What makes you think that you can be as much of a success here as you are in Europe? Well, uh, we say with all uh, humbleness that we have a better experience than what exists uh, today. Uh, it's uh, all of the music in the world at your fingertips. It's a lightning fast experience. So you can listen to all that music when you want, where you want. In addition to which, we've got a highly social experience. Uh, one of the first things you do when you download the uh, application is to import all your Facebook friends. And very soon, you know, in a matter of seconds, after uh, being introduced to the service, you're sharing music with all of your uh, friends. And yet on top of that, the fact that we've got a, a free service, which is a pretty great value, and we just think we've got a better experience. Now, I want to bring in our editor-at-large, Corey Johnson, who's been looking at Pandora's business model and is interested in your business model as well. Corey? Yeah, Ken, since you're not in Silicon Valley, I'm going to ask you a question that's considered rude in these parts. How do you plan to make money? Well, um, as it was pointed out at the uh, outset of the show, we're already a very large money maker for the industry. We've got some very serious investors who uh, are keen to make a return. So from day one, we've, uh, we've grown this business in a sustainable way, and we aim to, be, uh, we aim to continue to do that uh, as we launch in this market. Well, we've got, let, me we've be, got let, me be, let me be more specific, Ken. I'm sorry. Yeah. How much are you going to charge, and how are you going to take a profit out of that? Well, as explain the business model to me. Yeah, as Emily pointed out, we got three tiers of service. The first is is free. Um, that's been you know embraced by many millions of users in uh, in Europe. Then we've got two tiers of uh, paid service. For as little as four ninety nine, you can strip away the ads that exist in the free service. Uh, and that's a PC experience. If you want to take that stuff with you on your mobile device, uh, you can do that for nine ninety nine a month. That's the equivalent of a couple or two, three fancy coffees. So can, can you describe your relationship with Facebook and how important that is to Spotify's growth? Well, as I said, uh, the social aspect of Spotify um, is super important. It's a highly popular feature uh, of the service. I mean, music, when you think about it, is probably the most social thing there is. It says a lot about you as a person. And a lot of us discover music through our friends. It's one of the primary engines of discovery. To be able to do that in a dead simple way, like we've uh, enabled users to do on Spotify, is really important. Uh, so we've got a Facebook integration now. They're a great company. Um, they do great things. They're interested in making music more social, so are we. So it's a really happy partnership. And explain how your marketing tactics might be a little different from in the U.S. Uh, than they are in Europe. Are you doing anything differently to get the word out there about this service? Yeah, well, Spotify has always, um, you know, taken a sort of different approach from a lot of companies when it comes to marketing. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what our marketing plan is. We obviously have one. But uh, right now, we want to sort of put the best experience in the hands of users, let them play with it, and let them uh, tell us what they think. So what's it going to take for you to get to profitability? Well, look, we don't talk about the, uh, the finances. Um, however, you know, right now we do have 1.6 million uh, and counting paid users of the service in Europe. That's an important part of the, uh, the equation, obviously. We've got some blue chip advertisers for, for launch, which we're really happy about. And you put all those things together and you sort of you know, are on a path to uh, a great uh, success in economic terms as well. 
All right, Ken Parks of Spotify. I've got my trial, and I'm gonna. I can't wait to start using it and check out the service. Thanks so much for Thank joining us. Thank you so us. much.